Have you ever wondered how animated cartoons are made? Or maybe you already know and you're looking to create your own animations. Well, I've got great news for you. I can show you how to animate 2D characters and even better, I can teach you using the same software that's used for shows like The Simpsons, Bob's Burgers, Family Guy, and even Disney's used it for full-length animated features and TV shows. The software is Toon Boom Harmony, and I'd like to welcome you to the course 2D Animation and Cutout Characters in Toon Boom Harmony 15. My name is Tony Ross, and I have over two decades of experience teaching computer graphics and animation. Now, there are two things you need to know before taking this course. One, the software Toon Boom Harmony exists. And two, I, Tony Ross, am teaching it. So no worries if you're just starting out. But enough about me. Let's give you a quick overview on how the software works and how easily you can animate a pair of cartoon eyes, even if you can't draw. So let's get started. Now, Toon Boom Harmony comes in three different versions. There's Harmony Essentials, Advanced, and Premium. Now, what I'm gonna be showing you in this simple little cartoon eyes tutorial can be done in either version, but we'll talk more in the versions later. So I'm just gonna call this TT for Tony Teach Eyes. And I'm gonna leave this at the default of 1920 by 1080, and that's 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels at a frame rate of 24. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Create Scene. Now, if this is your first time getting into the program, this may be a little intimidating, but no worries. I'll be walking you through this step by step. And within this first little exercise, I'm gonna be showing you an overview of exactly, one, how I teach, but also how easy it is to work in this program. So one of the first things I wanna do is I wanna come down here to the timeline. If you look, there is these little numbers going left to right. And right in this area where it says drawing, I'm gonna change this. And this is the layer we're working on. So I'll simply click on this area and I'm gonna call this eyes. All right. Now we're gonna be using a couple of little tools here. And our tools are located to the left and this is our default workspace layout. So we have the select tool, which is this black arrow up top the contour editor, which is the white arrow right beneath it. And we're gonna come all the way down to the line tools. So just line, rectangle, and ellipse. So this is what we're gonna use first. I wanna go ahead and select ellipse. Now by default, the color is black. And if you look over here in our color area, and if you notice the spelling of this, this is a French Canadian company, so colors spelled a little bit differently. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna simply click and drag out a circle. And I'm thinking that circle line is a little thin. So I'm gonna let go of that, and I'm gonna undo this and do Command Z, Control Z on PC. And what you can do with these tools is simply hold down your O key, click and drag, and it's gonna make the lined a little bit thicker. So this is kind of changing the size of your brush. So I'm gonna click and drag out. Nice little circle, doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so that is going to be our eye. And what I wanna do is I wanna come up to our contour editor and select this. And if you note, when I get really close to the edge here, my cursor changes. So what I wanna do is kind of alter this a little bit so it doesn't look too perfect. I wanna make it, kind of give it a hand-drawn feel. All right. So now I wanna go ahead and select my Select tool which is the black arrow up top. I'll click to select the eye. 
and I'm going to copy this command C that's control C on PC. And I'll go ahead and paste this command V control V on PC. And again, with the select tool, I'm going to move this over a little bit. And I'm even going to bring this down as far as the size a little. So I'm going to hold on my shift key and click one of the side corners here and drag this down. All right, next, I'm going to go back to my shape tools. I'm going to use the line tool. And I'm just going to draw a straight line across here. I'm going to do the eyelids. And I can again use my contour editor. So I want to bend this a little bit. All right. And next, go back to our shape tools. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. We're going to make the eyeballs or the pupils. Now you might be thinking this looks really messy, but we're going to clean it up shortly. Now I can make these two different sizes or I can simply copy like we did before. I'm just going to go ahead and draw them out. Just kind of drag those out. All right, now we've got our rough little eyes drawn out. So what I want to show you next is I'm going to play around with something called drawing substitutions. So we're going to duplicate this drawing that we've made and then start editing it so it looks a little more alive and we're going to create an eye blink. Now to do this, we're going to use some of the features in Toon Boom Harmony. So I'm going to select frame three down on my timeline. All right, so that's right here. And I want to go ahead and stretch this out or extend my exposure. So I'm going to simply use a quick key and press F5. Now, if that doesn't work for you, I'm going to undo that command Z. Simply right click. And then you'll see extend exposure F5. So what I want to do now is I'm going to select the very second frame. And I want to duplicate what we have in our first frame. So right click and we'll go to drawings and then duplicate drawing. All right. Now, if you notice, if you look close enough here, there is an extra little line that showed up on our timeline. And this is because we just duplicated the drawing. So what I want to do here is I want to manipulate the lines and circles we created in the first frame. So I'm going to go back to my select tool. All right, I'm going to click on this line here. I'm going to drag this down a bit because we're making it like the character's eyes are closing. I'll select the large eye here. I'm going to click and push this down. And what I want to show you here is called squash and stretch. So think of like one of the little playground balls or a beach ball. If you squish this down, then the sides should go outward. So I'm going to hold down my option key and drag my sides outward. All right, and I'll do the same thing for the other eyeball. I'm going to push this down. Hold on my option key, Alt on PC, and drag this outward. So if we look in our timeline, we have our playhead here. We'll look at the first frame and the second frame. All right. So what I want to do also in the second frame is I'll bring the eyeballs down a little bit. I'm just holding down my shift key and using my arrow keys on my keyboard. All right. Now we're going to duplicate this once more. So we'll select frame three. And we'll right click. And we'll go to drawings, duplicate drawings. 
And now I'm going to use my select tool. I'm going to grab our little eyelids. I'm actually going to just spin this around. Okay. Now, how am I doing that? I'm just simply going out to the right to the end here until I see my cursor. So it gives that little rotate icon. I'm going to bring this down a bit. Now here, I don't need the eyeballs because what I'm showing is this is going to be the eye completely closed. All right. And one last thing we need to do, we need to do a little more squash and stretch. So we'll push this downward. Hold down our option key, alt on PC, and just drag this out to the sides. Same thing with the other eye, squish it down and drag it out. So now if I move my playhead back and forth or scrub my playhead, we see our blink happening. And last but not least, if you notice, this looks a little messy here as far as the lines and everything. It's not looking like a, well, it doesn't look like a finished cartoon. So what I'm going to use is something called the cutter tool. So under my select tool is the cutter tool. And basically, if you look over in the tool properties, by default, it is set to the lasso. And this little box here is selected. So it says use mouse gesture. So I'm going to show you this like so I'm making like almost like a little check mark. And what I would do is for these drawings, the lines that I don't want, I'm simply going to do a quick gesture with those. So I'll do this on the eye lines at first or the eyelid. Okay. So I'm just doing a quick little movement there. And right now, what I need to do is kind of take over this little line here. All right, I'll do the same thing for this other part. I'm going to zoom in here and see if I can get part of that eyelid there. That's going to stay there. So we'll now go to the next frame. And we'll get rid of the pieces as well. All right, get rid of the base one. I'm going to Command Z, make sure I'm getting rid of the right one. All right. Now, mind you, I'm zooming in and out using my scroll wheel. And we'll go to the last one here. Our last frame. Get rid of all the extra pieces. Now this very first frame here, the eyeball is a little bit high. So I want to go ahead and grab my select tool and I'll just bring this down a little bit. All right. So if I scrub my playhead, there's our quick little blink. Now, if you're still with me, let me show you how this works. And this is how cutout animation works, where you actually create a puppet and then you can call on the different pieces when you need them. So on my timeline, I want to go ahead and select frame 60 and press F5, export that. And I'm going to hold on my shift key and select those first three frames. And on my timeline, there's this little K with a minus here. It basically means we want to hide those other drawings we did, and we only want to show the very first drawing. So I'm going to click on this K with a minus. All right. And so now you no longer see those lines there. And if I scrub my playhead in all 60 frames, you do not see the eye blinking at all. It's just the very first frame that we drew. So now what I want to do is I'm going to drag my playhead to about maybe frame 20. 
Now, when we are creating these different drawings or drawing substitutions, each time we did that, each time we duplicated one, it gave us a different number. Now, you may have seen on perimeters here that sometimes the number will change from one to two or three because we created three different drawings. So I can actually change this drawing on frame 20. I'm going to simply click and slide and it shows two. And if you look on our screen, it's now showing drawing two. So all the way up until frame 20, it's showing drawing one. And then at frame 20, it's showing drawing two. Now I'm going to go a few more frames and I'll use my parameters again to show drawing three. And I'll let that hold for a few more frames. Go back to drawing two. And then by frame 30, we'll go back to drawing one. So if you look on the timeline, there's these little lines here. And again, that's where the drawings are changing. But if I scrub my playhead, you basically see that we've created a blink. Now, if I click play, you see that that comes through as a simple blink. So we basically created these shapes. We didn't really draw anything. And then we manipulated the shapes that we had created. And we just duplicated those and changed those over time. This is just one of the techniques that's used in cutout animation. And one of the techniques you use in working with Toon Boom Harmony. So if you're ready, Come on in, take this course, and I'll show you the wonders of Toon Boom Harmony, how you can create your own characters, have them moving, talking, walking, and all those other fun things that cartoons like to do. So sign up for the course, and I'll see you in the next lesson.